Hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce the three approaches to research. Uh, first is qualitative research. Um, so we use qualitative research methods if we're trying to understand the meaning of an event, some phenomenon, uh, trying to understand a person's experiences. Um, so in, if we're gonna use qualitative research methods, it would usually be because it's a new topic that uh, hasn't really been explored very much or maybe not with the population that you're trying to study. Um, and there aren't existing theories to explain the phenomenon or whatever the topic is that you're looking to study. Um, so it's sort of an exploratory uh, methodology where you're learning about why something happens um, or how somebody feels when something happens or why people make decisions that we make. Um, and so it's using an inductive approach to analysis, meaning that we're starting with observations about whatever the thing is that we're studying and using those observations to sort of build up and, and work towards developing a theory or an explanation for something that might be happening. Um, so that's inductive. So we're starting with smaller observations and putting those together and building up to a theory to help explain those observations. And in qualitative research, when you're finished, the written report um, would be very flexible in structure because there are different ways of completing qualitative research. Um, and so there are different ways that you might present that and, and report on that when you're finished. Okay, quantitative research um, is more objective. Uh, so qualitative is more subjective, quantitative more objective. Um, so in quantitative research, you are using deductive reasoning. So you're starting with a broader idea or a theory that maybe has been established by previous research and you're testing hypotheses that are based on that theory. Uh, so in that case, you're starting with a broader idea and kind of working down to deduce smaller, uh, more specific conclusions. So you're testing objective theories, uh, examining relationships between different variables, like does one thing cause another? Uh, for example, uh, you might use survey instruments that produce numbered data. Um, you might not. There are other methodologies where you don't necessarily always use surveys, but in any case, in a quantitative study, you are producing numerical quantifiable data. Uh, then you would use statistical analyses to analyze the, the numerical data that you've generated. Um, and so you're taking these broader theories and boiling them down to smaller, more specific conclusions. Um, and then when you write up your final report, there's usually a, a pretty firm structure that you would uh, follow to write your report for publication. Um, so generally speaking, we tend to use quantitative methods um, when we're trying to identify factors that influence a particular outcome. So uh, we might be looking to see if this variable causes this outcome or this interaction of variables causes this outcome. Um, you can use quantitative methods when you're trying to evaluate uh, the utility of an intervention. So you're trying to see if a certain medication is effective or um, which is more effective, this medication or this exercise program, or maybe you're comparing two types of exercise programs. Uh, so that's what we mean by intervention, something that we apply to a group and see if that intervention, that methodology or whatever it is that we're trying to test, uh, see if that uh, changes the outcome. Um, and we also will use it to understand the best predictors of an outcome. So maybe we're not intentionally manipulating um, the situation or what's going on or manipulating the outcome, but we still might want to see, well, what you know, different things happened before this particular outcome occurred. Uh, so that way we can better predict that outcome, even if we're not intentionally changing that outcome. And then mixed methods research uh, is where we combine qualitative and quantitative methodology. So it, we integrate the two. Uh, so mixed methodology is very useful um, if you have a need for both quantitative data, like you want to find out what uh, variables are affecting the outcomes and 
Um, you're trying to, you're starting with maybe an initial theory and, and working down to more specific, um, you're testing more specific hypotheses based on that theory. Uh, but then maybe you also need the qualitative component to help explain why. Um, so what happens with quantitative research in some cases is that you get these interesting results, that you get statistically significant results um, based on your methodology, but then you're left with a question of why. Um, so that's where sometimes interpreting the data, interpreting the results of your study can get a little tricky sometimes if you don't necessarily have a qualitative component to the study that can help you say, well, here's why this worked, or here's why participants dropped out of the study, or here's why participants wanted to participate, or here's what the quality of life was like for the participants during this study. Uh, because maybe you're testing a medication or something else and you find out it was effective, that's great. But what if at the same time the participants had a miserable experience? What if it was really unpleasant and affected their quality of life? Well, you find those sorts of things out through qualitative components of a mixed methods approach. Uh, so that's really where this type of approach is valuable. Uh, so it gives you additional insight to a research problem. Um, so we would use this whenever quantitative or qualitative alone is just not adequate. And we wanna mix the two together so that we can benefit from the strengths of both types of design. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for my next video. Bye.